I understand that uh, the Parish Pastoral Council is uh, launching this prayer power campaign to promote some very basic values, especially in preparing for the 2022 elections. And what values are we talking about? Makadios, makatao, makabayan, at makakalikasan. And for today, the value promoted is makadios. I'd like to think that the gospel that I read defines what makadios might mean for Christ. We may have misunderstood what it means to be a Christian, namely, that it is not really about promoting a religion, but rather about living a way of life and witnessing to the one who represents this way, namely, our Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth. This way of life is best expressed by our readings today. They remind me of the famous author G.K. Chesterton, who once said, and let me quote him, It is not that Christianity had been tried and found wanting. Rather, it had been wanted and not been tried. In today's gospel, Jesus reformulates the so-called golden rule into a positive statement. Lahat naman tayo natutunan natin yung golden rule, but stated negatively, do not do unto others what you do not want others to do unto you. But did you notice? Jesus made it positive. Do unto others what you would have others do unto you. Meaning, you want to be consoled? Then, console others. You want to be understood? Then, understand others. You want to be loved? Then, love others. Jesus is saying that we have not learned to truly love yet. If we love only those who can love us back, he goes for what St. Ignatius of Loyola calls the Magis Principle. The Magis Principle. Meaning, we can do better. We can do more than the ordinary. The real challenge about loving for most of us is when our love is reciprocated not by love, but by betrayal or rejection or pain. And the call of Jesus is to choose to keep loving anyway. To choose to go against the impulse to hurt back when we are hurt or to return insult for insult, injury for injury. These are the common situations that bring out our lesser self. Di ba natin napapansin ito? This is what is happening, especially in the social media nowadays. And I feel sad about it. When people lose their own sense of decency just because they are insulted by trolls. Some people can get so traumatized, before they know it, they begin to behave like trolls themselves, returning vulgarity for vulgarity, falsehood for falsehood, cuss words for cuss words. Hindi makadyos ang gawain yan. Sino ang masaya? Eh, this is Satanas. No one but Satan is happy about that. He loves to turn us into his image and likeness. Jesus 
is teaching us the art of rising above our lesser instincts. How to summon our greater, our more noble, more dignified self. Never wishing ill or harm on anybody, not even on your worst enemy. To get to see ourselves in the other and to realize that you cannot hurt the other without hurting yourself at the same time. To see in every fellow human being a fellow sufferer. I know something inside us is reacting when we hear the words, love your enemy. And we say, ano ba yan? What a tall order. How are we supposed to do that? And I have friends who say that. And I know they mean it. Are we expected to just grin and bear it? Are we just going to tolerate the terrible evil that some people in society are doing? Are we not committing a sin of omission that way? These are the kind of questions that usually end with the conclusion that perhaps what Christianity is promoting is subservience, submissiveness, slavish thinking. And they'd say, can we not just settle for the normal? Namely, to love those who love us and to hate those who hate us. Parang yun daw ang norm. No, that is not the norm of Christianity. To those who caricature Christianity this way, I suggest that they read the scriptures a little more to find out that Christianity is not about accepting, but about resisting evil consistently. Ang kalaban natin is evil, not people. Evil at work in people. How can we reduce this to submissiveness when even Jesus did not turn the other cheek when he was slapped on one cheek at the temple, by the temple guard. You can read that in John 18, 22. And his own mother, Mary, whom we love to portray as a submissive handmaid. You know, she sang the most radical canticle in the Gospel of St. Luke, in the Magnificat prophesying the downfall of the mighty and the lifting up of the downtrodden. In many instances in history, even the church has sometimes tended to settle for a watered-down version of Christianity. Are we not familiar with the usual reaction that says, Oh, come on! Let us be realistic. You make it sound so easy, and yet we know it is easier said than done. Well, in fairness, Jesus never said that it was easy. Remember that scene when Jesus told his disciples plainly that they were free to go. Walang pilitan. They were free to go if they also could not accept what he was teaching which they found difficult. The common reaction is this. Can I help it? E tao lang naman ako. I am only human. It is precisely this kind of reasoning that Jesus is challenging. And the message of Jesus is, wag mong sabihin tao lang ako. Para bang napakasama ng maging tao. Oh, no doubt. Weakness and failure are part of being tao, of being human. But it is not fair to equate 
being human with being weak or being a failure, that is an insult to the God who created us. We are image and likeness of God. It is not right to equate humanity with our lesser self. And Jesus would say, you can do better than that. How? By restraining ourselves from acting on sheer impulse, by learning not to simply react to situations, but rather to respond to them. By not going down to the level of those who offend us, those who maltreat, insult, or abuse us. By not giving in to the desire to get even, or to say, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Jesus teaches us instead to try to see where the other is coming from and what makes people do the evil things that we find them doing. To hate the sin, but not the sinner. To distinguish between person and action. To believe in the innate goodness that is in people. Walang likas na masamang tao. To treat only evil as our true enemy. This is the Christian option we call justice with mercy. To desire justice is human, but to desire mercy is divine. I think St. Luke was not very comfortable with the line which Matthew puts in the mouth of Jesus. In the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew, Jesus says, Be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Pinalitan yun in St. Luke. St. Luke reformulated it as, Be merciful, just as also your Father is merciful. We are image and likeness of our merciful God. He teaches us not to judge or condemn. Bakit? Because we do not fully know where the other is coming from, what their circumstances are, what it is that makes them do what they are doing. Jesus teaches us to forgive and to do it, not just for the sake of the person who needs to be forgiven, but for your own sake as well. For our own sake, we who need to learn to be forgiving. He teaches us to do ourselves the favor of not poisoning our lives with the toxicity of anger and resentment and ill will. He teaches us that the surest way to obtain God's grace without measure is by being as gracious and as generous ourselves without measure. Okay. Conclusion. Kaya ba natin to? Can we really do this on our own? I'm sorry to let you down if I say Hindi. No, we cannot on our own. But the good news of Christianity is, yes, we can. Through Jesus, with Jesus, and in Jesus. That is why St. Paul, in our first reading, ends with the exhortation. Remember this, whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father, through Him. And then you'll discover what seems impossible is perfectly possible.